Do you know how and when to use colored gels when using your flash? The following tip may offer some help. Adorama TV presents You Keep Shooting with Brian Peterson, where you'll learn unique and creative techniques that will elevate your photography skills. Here's your host, Brian Peterson. This afternoon I find myself here with my workshop students in Darien, Georgia, which is about uh, 20 miles north of Jekyll Island, and we're about uh, 40 miles south of Savannah. I'm saying this because you may want to come here yourself and reduplicate what one of my students, Peggy Kahan, has found. The difference between what Peggy found and what we're going to end up with is a suggestion I made to her about the use of flash. Hi, I'm Brian Peterson and you are watching Adorama TV. You may notice behind me, we've got this old abandoned shack or warehouse of some kind. I shouldn't say shack, but it's a pretty good sized concrete structure with some old rusty shutters. And here we've got a old warehouse district and these walls, believe it or not, they're all made from oyster shells and a little bit of cement. So Peggy came along and she had the brilliant idea because Peggy is always looking for fresh points of view, something we haven't seen before. She recognizes the value of framing with the frame. So she's framing through this hole that you see right here, that distant old warehouse in the background. The trouble is, and I'm sure you can see, this side of the wall, those oyster shells are in open shade. Take a look at this first photograph and you'll see a black foreground framing the distant warehouse in the background. Nothing wrong with that, except it's not telling. You have no idea what that black foreground is. The reason it's black is because the exposures for the much brighter blue sky and sunlight in the background. I've got an amber gel, a blue gel, and a red gel. In my other hand, I've got the Nikon SB900 flash, and I've got a pocket wizard attached to it. Peggy is a cannon shooter. She is using a pocket wizard on her hot shoe and using my Nikon flash as a result of getting this photograph. And the reason that's possible is because we're shooting this particular shot, as I always do, in manual exposure. So, with that in mind, we're going to take first a photograph of that wall with flash. Peggy, mm -hmm. go ahead, no gels, okay? Be my guest. All right, take a look at that first photograph. I think it's obvious, at least more so, that you now have an oyster shell wall. So what we're going to do now to dress it up is we're going to put on some gels. The first gel we're going to go to is a blue one. And very simply, I'm going to take this off, put it on like so. And Peggy, let's take another shot at this. Go ahead. All right. Take a look at that. Look at the two side by side. You got one without a gel and one with the blue gel. Now in the interest of saving time, I've already shot it, or shall I say Peggy has. Take a look at the amber gel. And take a look at the red gel. You got all four of them up there on the screen. This isn't a contest for you to decide which one's best because I think it has a lot to do with personal choice. But more importantly, a lot of you with flash don't ever consider the use of gels. And it's a suggestion I'm making here especially just to dress it up a little bit. Blue, red, amber, no gel at all. Again, the choice is yours. But let's also bring this to a close so you fully understand how this is accomplished. Peggy's using a 24 millimeter wide angle lens. We have a depth of field issue. We need sharpness from the foreground all the way to that distant house. You know me by now, that's an F-22 storytelling shot. Secondly, we tell the flash that. In this case, the SB900. In manual, I can dial up F-22 on the back of the flash, 400 ISO, at an angle of view of the flash of 28 millimeters, it says I need to be 8.4 feet away. Fine and dandy, we shoot the first shot from 8.4 feet, but then we start adding those gels and we lose a stop. That means the flash needs to come in 25% closer, in some cases 50% closer, particularly with a red gel. But still, F22 on the camera. We've also preset the focus, as you can see right here, to one meter. 24 millimeters, preset the focus to one meter. In this case, we can do that because it is a full frame sensor also. This is a Canon, Mark D, uh, Canon 5D Mark II. So that's how it's all done. That's how it's all set up. More importantly, it's all about the gels. And speaking of gels, where do you buy the gels? Of course, you buy them where I shop, at Arama. When the prices are that low and the service is that good, why would you shop anywhere else? Until next time, this is Brian Peterson from Darien, Georgia. 
reminding you, you keep shooting. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 8 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.